Hello there. Yahweh bless you for seeking to understand this issue of the name, the name which became Jesus, the name of the man who is known as Jesus. Um, in Hebrew, his name is Yeshua. And there's actually nothing controversial about this name, but people are making a big fuss um, and making a laughing stock of themselves in the eyes of anyone who really knows Hebrew. Um, this name Yeshua is just the way that the older name Yehoshua was pronounced in post-exilic times. And you can see it even in the Bible, um, here in Nehemiah, Nehemiah. 8, 17, um, it speaks of the days of Yeshua bin Nun. That's, um, that's the one we know as Joshua, Joshua the son of Nun. Um, and you can see that it uses Yeshua. It doesn't use Yehoshua because the name had come to be pronounced as Yeshua. You see, um, Yehor, the prefix Yehor got shortened to Yor, and in front of a, a syllable with U here, the or became E, so it did what's um, called a dissimulation. Uh, and that's just a natural development in the language, in the pronunciation of the language. It's not something people have uh, tried to do, it just happened. And it happened elsewhere in the language as well. And so that means that a name like um, Yehohu became Yehu, Jehu. Uh, and likewise, instead of um, Yehoshu, uh, it became, instead of Yoshu, it became Yeshu. And so that's why it's written like that. And that's why it sounds like that. And um, that's how... Yeshua got his name. And then in Greek you can see over here that it's transliterated as closely as you can in Greek because Greek doesn't have any y, so you have to use a e at the start. So that's y, like here, ye. This is y. And in, in um, Greek the, there's only a long e and a a long e and a short e, and so they had to use the long one, which um, typically sounds more like er in that's in the Attic Greek, which is a little bit older. But probably in in um, Koine Greek, it it might have just been a long e, just like this one. But who knows? They had to compromise because they don't have letters for all the sounds that are in Hebrew. In Hebrew, we've got a sh sound here, but in Greek, there's no sh, so they had to have a s. Um, and then they've got u, and in Greek, that's represented as omicron upsilon there. Omicron upsilon. Uh, so that just means u. So you've got um, the closest as you can get to yeshu there. Yesu. And there's no, uh, there's no uh, in Greek, so you can't write anything there. And that uh, is not a an a. It's not an a, uh, right? It's not really Yeshua. Um, it's Yeshua. And you might say, okay, what about that little ah uh, there? Well, that's a glide. It was actually, it's not known. I don't think it's known before the Masoretic. Um, pointing, we could say that it's a bit a bit pedantic of the Masoretic scribes to include it. Um, they were indicating how after the U, when you say the sound, um, the throat naturally widens up a little and you get a bit of an ah just before the R. And so they actually decided to write that. But it's not a meaningful part of the spelling, it's not phonemic. Um, the only phonemes in this um, name are y, e, sh, u, 
and uh, such so yeah sure and you'll see that it's a a it's a long uh vowel there it's not yeshua it's not yeshua it's yeshua and that's why you've got the long vowel here the long vowel Erta. so this is the the historical pronunciation of yeshua's name um yes it did come from yehoshua but that was long long before yeshua was born um that is long before Yeshua, son of Maryam, was born. Um, so if you want to call him Yehoshua, you'll be calling him something that his name his, uh, his name was not pronounced that way in his lifetime. His mother didn't call him that. The angel didn't call him that. The name had changed in pronunciation to Yeshua. That's the historically accurate pronunciation of his name. That's how it's always written um, in the Aramaic Bible. And anywhere else um, of his time. It's never written in the old way. Because that's obsolete by the time that he was born. Now you might say, but Yeshua has been there since the beginning. Well, he was in heaven um, as the word of God. As the word of Yah. Uh, but it's not said that he was called Yeshua at that time. In in scripture, it doesn't say that he was he was called Yehoshua at that time or Yeshua at that time. Um, the first time he is called Yeshua is just before he is conceived when the angel announced it to Mariam. And Yeshua seems to be the name given to his uh, being as a human, not as uh, the word of God before becoming human, before becoming flesh. So have a think about these things and argue with me if you wish. Um, but let's let's talk about it and learn about Hebrew and learn about what um, learn what we need to learn to to treat this issue pro properly, because this is a linguistic issue. It's not a theological one. It's not something that we can just go getting dogmatic about and saying I know I know I know because such and such verse says something. This is a clearly linguistic issue, and it's an open shut case when it com comes to the linguistics of it. You can see it in the Bible there. This is his name. And you might say, oh, but it doesn't have Yahweh's name in it anymore. It's just got Yeh in it. Um, but that that is from his name. And you might say, oh, yeah, but he was supposed to come in the name of Yahweh. But whenever something's done in the name of someone, that doesn't mean that that person has to have that person's name inside his name. To do something in the name of someone doesn't mean that you've got their name in your name. Uh, like it says in, in the Torah, uh, that the, the Luiyim minister in Yahweh's name, that doesn't mean that they're all called Yahweh something, Yahweh this, Yahweh that. So have a good think about this, um, because we don't want to be stupid and we don't want to be divided over things that are pretty plain in Scripture, pretty clear. Open shut case. And let's um, praise the name of Yeshua together. <laughs>